Hello and welcome back to my craft room. Well, I've just already made two videos today, very excitedly opening a couple of um, deliveries. One was my first art swap square from the lovely Rachel. She's such a talented artist. I will um, link to her below because I'm going to try and emulate one of her techniques that, that she does quite a lot in a minute just to give you some ideas. And the other one was some amazing embroideries that came from Christine Preston. Thank you so much, Christine. I really appreciate those as well. I'm just having such a lovely time with all this swapping. <laughs> I haven't sent any out yet. So I've been very busy. But what I said I would do is come back every day this week and just give you some little ideas for really quick things you could do if you want to join in with the a great big little art swap. Uh, but you're a beginner and you and or you're not very confident and you just don't know where to start doesn't need to be an amazing work of art you don't need to be a talented artist and I'm about to prove that <laughs> so today I'm going to be dabbling with watercolor and I've got a few different ideas to try and I'm not going to show you all the way through because uh, I can't make this too long of a video <laughs> it wasn't be as long as yesterday's please <laughs> so let's go straight to the desk without further ado um I've got a uh, Two little containers of water, one for clean, one for dirty. I've got um, a big fat brush, a finer brush, and then I want a really long, thin brush in a minute. These great long, thin ones are lovely for doing long, thin, continuous lines. But we'll come to we'll we'll, we'll talk about that when we come to it. Lovely selection of brushes at the moment. BB Barbara Brady sent me some lovely brushes in that lovely package that she sent. Um, and then. I think I will probably want to do a bit of splattering as well. I've got this paper. I thought doing these four inch or 10 centimetre squares for the swap um, would be a good time, a good chance to use up some of these um, small A5 pads that I've got because I can cut two of the squares out of this. There'll be a little bit of waste, but I'll keep it because it'll, it, it'll come in for collage and things. Um, I think this must have been in a scrawler box because I wouldn't normally buy an A5 pad. Really, I find them a little bit small to work in, but perfect for this. So I've got several different techniques to try. Um, some of them I will just leave it all in one piece and cut them up afterwards. And some of them I will cut the squares first and mask off the edges. So the idea is to have a 10 centimetre square um, with a one centimetre border all around it. Or if you want inches, that's four inches with a three eighths of an inch border all around it. Don't worry too much about being absolutely precise about that. I don't think anyone's gonna be sending out the art swap police if you get it slightly wrong. But just, you know, that's as near as, as, near to that as, you, as you can get. So you can either do all your work on a 10 centimeter square and then mount it onto just plain white card or something or black if you'd rather or, or whatever. To give you that border or you can cut it 12 centimeters square and just mask off that outer centimeter whichever way you want to do it i'm going to do it both ways today um now one of my ideas and i'm going to get that started first because then i can put that aside to dry is um inspired by the lovely rachel brierton i will put her instagram below or well, she's arilai on her so i'll put it here oops uh, rachel brierton or Arilai <laughs> in our Discord community. Um, she also hosts a Discord community herself called Indie Hive. So if you're into um, uh, indie games, um, check that out as well. Uh, lots of um, lots of interest, and she's got a blog as well. Lots of interesting stuff on there, um, and she's got on her Instagram as well. You'll see all her artwork. So I've got some different paints I'm going to try today. Um, Actually, I can show you one of the pieces that Rachel sent me and then you can see how far away I'm going to be. This is the beautiful four inch square, my first swap that arrived today. This is Rachel's, what she calls her doodling. And it is doodling. That's the thing. I mean, it is just doodling at the end of the day. Rachel does such a beautiful job of it. But check out, yeah, check out her Instagram. Isn't it beautiful? And sometimes she uses white pens or metallic pens as well, which looks really nice. So I'm going to try something like this technique and we'll see. We'll see how I get on. 
Um, I think I'm going to try for this one, I'm going to try painting it all in one go right across here and then cut it up afterwards and mount it onto a cheaper white card or something. But it's nice that out of these A4 sheets I can get two 10 centimetre blocks that way and um, I'll just have a little strip along here which I can use for collage or something. I'm already going on far more than I should have done. So I'm not sure how Rachel does that initial stripey effect. I'm going to be making this up as I go along and we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I've got two different... Um, so this one's uh, pastels. This is by uh, Derwent and I might try that one for this technique. And then I've got this one, this is a De La Rowney one, just more normal sort of watercolours. I've got a brush in there as well. And then there's this beautiful little set, this is uh, CSY Art Gallery. Little mini tin box of metallic watercolour paints. Each of these little um, pans has got a magnet on the back to hold it in. So you can take it out and you can have different sets as well. And this is given to me by the lovely Claire. Thank you Claire. Claire96Bell on Instagram. Check out her artwork and stitching as well. She's doing so, it's amazing. She's only started relatively recently and she's um, she's doing so amazingly well. You never think she'd only recently started. And I think we've agreed to swap stitch pieces and uh, and art pieces, Claire, haven't we? So um, I'm, dying, I'm, I'm dying to see what um, Claire sends and I hope she likes what I send her. So these were beautiful when I used them before. I'm holding them a little bit, so I'm going to try and make myself use them this time. Just love the little tin, it's so cute, isn't it? Okay, got my spritzy bottle ready now. I'm just gonna give these a spritz first. It's a little while since I've used these actually, so let's leave them to start to start working. Then I've got clean brush, clean water, and I'm just going to um I'm just gonna put some water down first. I don't know. This is how Rachel creates her backgrounds, but that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Love that colour. Of course, with them, um, and keep the edges wet all the time. With them, um, watercolour, it will dry. So that's the beginning of one background. I'm going to leave that layer to dry and come back to it in a minute. Okay, getting out my manky old guillotine for the next one. And this time I'm going to cut 10 centimetres square. I've got, I've got two um, other little techniques to try. One is one that I, I like to use and I have done before. And another one is following along um, a tutorial by CC uh, CC Creations. I will I will link to her below. So for this one, I need um, I'm going to do some negative painting, and I've done this with leaves before, which is nice and simple. But I'm wondering whether to do hearts this time. Mm. No, I'll stick with leaves because it's nice and straightforward. So I'm just going to draw a couple of different size leaf shapes, and I'm going to keep it really really simple, just ordinary leaf shapes it just helps to have them cut out i'm keeping them reasonably small because it's a small piece of paper if you're only making one or two squares you might want to just cut the square the, the 12 centimeter square mask off your one centimeter around the outside and then do your painting technique and then when you take the masking tape off you've automatically got that little white border all around um, and i do love a tape pill but it's just more economical with my paper with this many to do to do it this way Okay, I'm just going to use this H pencil because I don't want anything too, too obvious. And the f um, no, the very first thing I'm going to do is a wash, just a wash all over. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm just going to put that a wash of that all over. On the camera you'll probably hardly see it and it's a very very light green to my eye and it will dry up even lighter so now i need to set that aside to dry you can see there's it's wet all over but there's only a hint of color there my other piece now it's not quite dry yet but you can see it has flattened out nicely so i'll go back in with some more color in a minute meanwhile i got this one which was inspired by cc 
So uh, Cece's, Cece's Creations, I will link to her. She does some amazing, all kinds of different watercolour techniques and uh, doodling into watercolours and things. I've been watching her on and off for years and she's brilliant. She just always seems to keep coming up with fresh ideas as well. She started off just by freehanding a, f a flower and she had it kind of coming off of one edge rather than just plonked in the middle, which I thought was quite nice. You could always um, draw the shape out on a piece of paper first and uh, trace it or use some frisk transfer paper. And if you wanted to do the same idea several times for all your swaps, you would only have to draw it out once, wouldn't you? So that's my basic flower shape, really, really basic flower shape. I prefer odd numbers of petals, but you can do whatever you like. Now let's see if I can do it half as well as, <laughs> as Cece did and make it look half as easy, that would be good. So first I'm going to paint my background first. Cece used this gorgeous deep purple, which is a really nice thing. I think I'm going to go with something like that actually, because it did look amazing. So I haven't got a true purple in here, but I could put some of that red in if I want it more purple. But actually I'm quite liking this now. Okay, I might need to swap to a smaller brush. Let's see how we get on. Too lazy to go and get a smaller brush. <laughs> so you can see my watercolour technique. is a bit rubbish but the point of me doing these little videos is not to say I'm a great artist um, uh, here's a tutorial telling you how to do a beautiful work of art the purpose of these little videos I'm doing this week is to say look you don't have to be a great artist to make a little piece of art no one's expecting Rembrandt do you know what I mean <laughs> well, I'm going to set that to one side and see what it does and go back to one of the others. OK, quite like in the uh, pastel on here. And this is not completely dry. It still feels a bit cool, but I think it's dry enough to have another layer over it now. And um, so I'm going back to the pastel set and, um, and add some more colour. I'm being pretty random, but I know that I want separate layers to doodle so what Rachel does is with each stripe of colour oh that's annoying um, yeah what Rachel does is that with each stripe of colour she uses a different um, a different type of doodle so I want some uh, I want different layers same thickness all along I don't want even layers I want some uh, differences I'm just taking a clean wet brush and just running along that edge to to soften the edge but I'm still leaving it sort of to clear distinction between the colours if that makes any kind of sense at all I think that's we'll see what it's like when it dries up I th think that's probably enough I, I might want one, one more layer just because I do like quite a, a vivid colour but um, I'm going to be using black pen on this if I was using white I think I'd want the colour darker to give more of a contrast but yeah we'll see we'll let that dry I might want a third layer going back to my negative painting now so that very subtle layer of a very pale green has all dried up now and that's almost almost doesn't show but um it will it, it the idea is that you gradually build the color with this so I'm going back to the other paint set now and I want some more of that um yellowy green maybe a touch more green this time so now I'm going to take my leaf templates I'll start off with a bigger one I think and I'm just gonna um, it does help to have the template I'm just gonna uh, draw around it as the layers go it's, it's easy at this stage but as the layers go on it does get a bit confusing so it, it does help to have the to have a template <laughs> to follow I'm going to paint around over the whole thing but leaving out the leaf shapes that I've drawn. So you can see where the leaf shapes are. I'm going to leave those shapes the colour they are. Mm. 
and try and keep the all of the edges wet so I don't end up with too many with with lines happening. Do this with uh, circles, with hearts, so with any shape you like, really, or use different uh, different types of leaf shapes as well. Looks really nice in autumn leaf colours too. Okay, well, I've gone over that one a little bit, but it really doesn't matter. I'm kind of thinking now. I just want. Just a really light wash of yellow, really, really light over these for that kind of yellowy green. There we go, and I'm going to leave that. It doesn't look much at the moment, but trust me, we'll get there. <laughs> this is now dry enough for, I think. I think we need some more of the dark. Just keep those edges wet again. Getting the lines between layers. I like those kind of. I like the lines like like this, but I don't want like a hard light like that. I don't want that. So I just need to keep keep the edges moving with water, and then that doesn't happen. Do give like that. You can just use a damp, a clean damp brush and just lift the colour off a bit, but careful not to do what I've just done and now I've just made it all bleed in there. It's fine, I'm not going to worry about it. I'll just blend the edges out, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. You see? Not an artist. I think I should call this video not an artist but want to join the swap anyway. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned if you want to be an artist you are an artist. You just need to find what kind of art it is you like to do. I might do a bit of splatting and stuff later. I'll keep these in there. It is. Okay, putting that aside to dry again. One of the big secrets that um, I I always forget. I, I try to remember, but I always forget is that is that need to be, kind of be patient and let it dry between layers. And I'm not very good at doing that. Another idea I want to try. <laughs> is just to do a bit of, um, I think you would call it intuitive painting. Let the watercolour do its thing and see what happens. So this time I think what I will do this time is just um, spritz some water around here and there, not, not kind of, not everywhere, but I'll use my big fat brush again because that just makes me braver. Um, and I'm just gonna, Drop some paint in and see what happens. Another um, idea is to do a bit of reverse colouring. Just, you know, create yourself a, a painty background and then do some reverse colouring. See what, just see what happens. Um, there are lots of, if you look on YouTube, there's lots of uh, um, inspiration for reverse colouring. I have absolutely no plan here, none at all. It's a really nice way to play around with your watercolours and just find out, you know, what, what will they do? What if I put some clean water here and just like, you know, create a little bridge there and let it bloom out, you know? Remember, they will bloom into one another, so this is where it would have made sense for me to again to <laughs> tape it down, probably. But I'm gonna I'm gonna be patient and put this away to dry for a few minutes before I carry on. It's nice to work on three, four pieces at once because you've got something to do while you're waiting for the drying time. Maybe I will do one more layer of this quite happy with that now. I'm going to leave that to completely dry and then I'm going to be doodling into it and seeing if I can do a Rachel. <laughs> Probably can't. I've also just realised that of course my 10 centimetres is only going to go up to there isn't it? So we will end up having to... Mm, so maybe I want to bring that teal, just bring that teal colour down a little bit as well because I do love that. And bring in negative 
painting back in. Um, I'm going to use the, the big one again and I'm going to draw another layer of leaves but obviously I need to make sure I don't go over the top of the ones that are already there. I just want to go behind them. So this is where it is. It does start to get quite handy to have the, the template. And um, I'm making them look like they're just a pile of leaves uh, but you could definitely do it so it looks like they're growing on a branch. You know you can include the branches as well. So if you haven't got the template now, it's quite difficult to think, oh, OK, where does that come out? This does make it a little bit easier. Right, and I'm going in with... Go back to this one. Um, a bit of a darker green. And then next time I'll probably add a bit of blue in to darken it up even more. Um, just make it less watered down. So now I'm going to paint around both the first lot of leaves that I did and that second lot of leaves that I've just drawn in now. So I'm just painting uh, painting the background but leaving them out. So you could, if you want to do uh, your art swap, you could have a theme um, that you carry through all of your squares. Um, you could even, like somebody asked, a couple of people have asked actually, is it okay to use bits of their own previous artwork or copy their own previous artwork? You could definitely do that. You could trace or photocopy or whatever your own artwork and embellish on it. Or, um, you know, I think as long as it's your artwork and it fits on that four inch or 10 centimeter square, I think anything goes. I'm certainly, it's certainly not going to be upset if you send me a piece cut from something you've made previously or photocopied from your art, own artwork and embellished upon or you know whatever yeah I think if you if you photocopied someone else's <laughs> piece of art and reproduced it 20 times and sent them out as your own work then obviously that would be out of order <laughs> you know that's different it doesn't look much but it, it is gradually starting to build um Trust the process. <laughs> um, now I'm going to paint just some clear water into all of the petals, apart from that area where I've already got colour in it. I'm not going to worry. And I'm trying not to go quite up to <laughs> where it meets the, um, the background because it will bleed in if I do that. I'm just putting clear water on there. And I'm trying to work reasonably quickly. It's already a mess compared to CC's, but you know, I'm going to see it through. I'm going to hope that I can uh, make something of it in the end. And all of the little imperfections will add to its charm. <laughs> there we go. So for the middle, I'm going to go with a greenish. Um, I'll use some of this, I think. A really yellow green kind of colour and see how that looks. I might go more bluey. I'm just gonna touch some on there and let it just bleed out. And it's it's bleeding out into that water that I've laid down. I'm just coaxing it in there a little bit. And then I want just a little bit. I don't want to go in that too much. So you can see it's gradually spreading. It's quite faint, I might want to go in and add another layer and I want just a little bit at the edges as well. You can sort of, you know, clean, just damp brush, you can just lift it off again if it's too much. This is, the water's gone out into the background. It seems to, seems to be okay at the moment. Let's take some of that water off now. See? <laughs> So I don't want it going too far. And then what Cece does is she uses, um, let's give it a bit of a close up of that. So it's still not looking all that, is it? But we're getting there, we're getting there. And what Cece does is she uses um, gold then on a very thin brush to just go around the edges and just add that little lovely hint of gold. 
which makes everything look better. <laughs> and uh, she says it helps her to tidy up the edges. It, it might be that I find it, it really messes up my edges. There we go again. I don't know how well the camera is showing that actually. But it's quite nice, you get quite a subtle sort of look. I think maybe I feel like I want... I might regret this one, I'm putting a very tiny touch of pink in the middle. Regretting, regretting. Don't brush, just blend it out a bit. Okay. Oh, look at that, it's gone very pretty there, look. Like that. Right, what do we want on here? I'm going to stick with this kind of fairly harmonious background, I think. Um, something's making me want yellow, but I think that might be a mistake. You can always dab up with a tissue like that if you think, oh, <laughs> bit splattering. Always like a bit splattering. Right. Coming in with another layer. This might be the last layer, I'm not sure. And then I can tidy up all the lines, which I love doing. So again, I'm just painting all the background, taking care not to paint over any of the leaves I've done before or any of the leaves I've just drawn in now. You have to concentrate a little bit on this. It's easy to paint over where you shouldn't. <laughs> And now I get to play with the gorgeous metallic paints that Claire sent me. And what I'm hoping I can do is get a nice long thin line. Let's give them a good old spritz first. I'm gonna, which one am I gonna use? All right, this one would be pretty with it. It's kind of coppery color. Yeah, you can get, let's see with these long thin brushes, you can, if you really load the brush, you can, get a long thin line with it that just goes on and on and on. Beautiful. I don't know if I can get a really good line around these. We'll soon find out. Now I'm going to try and go around my petals in the same way. I keep turning the, turning the piece rather than trying to do things at a difficult angle. And you could just as well do this with um, a metallic pen. It will probably be easier, but I just want to... Uh, practice doing this really and use these beautiful paints. These little four inch squares are a great uh, opportunity to practice some little different techniques and things. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how happy I am with that. Um, I think what I'm going to do uh, is just get some of this out. Oh, look, it's so lush. I mean, just look at that. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is um, just do some, because uh, I've got splats anyway, I'm going to splat on this now. Okay, so now I'm ready to start finishing these all off. And I thought I'd just try, this is the big fat gold marker that came in this month's squaller box. I think probably safe, everyone's probably seen it by now. And... Uh, I'm just going to try a gold edge doing this. A bit of a waste. Of 
rather than do the black edge I've been doing on the others. And um, that would be a really nice way because it's just such a lovely solid gold line. And if I use that over there, you can see what a lovely gold that is. It dries down really nice and smooth. Um, now actually now this has dried up I quite like it as it is I think um, I could probably call that a little art piece um, I might change the proportion slightly and have a little bit less at the background I don't know but yeah I quite like it now it's quite, I quite it looks sort of almost like batik fabric or something <laughs> yeah so that's my that's my one idea and then I would this is my 12 centimeter piece of card that I'm going to mount them onto so I'll put my little initial in the corner I'll pop it onto my 12 centimeter card and that's how I would send it and suddenly seeing it framed like that it looks a lot better too doesn't it and then on the back I can put my name I'll pop, probably put my usernames as well I might put what I've used you can put what you like on the back really maybe a date maybe put great big little R's well I don't know I might put yeah or I might just put all that on a separate card right so let's put that to one side. Well, let's now this one I didn't notice till it dried, but it actually picked up some of that metallic paint in that last layer, which is a bit strange. This isn't my best ever effort ever effort at uh, negative painting. Actually, I don't know why it's come out a bit, but let's see. By the time I, I I like to put lines around all the leaves as well, so by the time I've done that, it might look fine. And I thought I might try this um, Uniball Signo. I don't think you have to shake it with these. So this is a Uniball Signo Broad and it's in a silver. I thought the silver might look nice against the green as well for a change. So I'm just going to outline all of the leaves. Don't need this here now, do I? Or I could do it in black just as well. And that'll sort of just tidy everything up. Hide all my pencil lines, you know. They're not realistic, they're very stylized leaves. I'm trying to keep this really simple. So I'm just going to go through and um, outline all my leaves like that. And I'll come back. Okay, so um, I finished doing all my leaves. I'll put some little dots in between as well. So you can see it's uh, catching the light on that lovely silver. It's difficult to show it on camera. And then I'll just put the black line with my permanent marker just around the outside. So, and I put my little signature in there, and that'll go out like that. So now I'm ready to move on to this one, mm -hmm. and I'm going to try some different um, ideas here. I've got my, I've got quite a, a fat micron pen and a thinner one. Um, I've got that uh, Signo Broad. I've got an ultra fine Sharpie. Probably that's too fat. That's the trouble. It's a beautiful gold, but it's really fat, that nib. And I've got that white jelly roll. And then I've got these, I love Pintor paint pens. Um, and I love this set of colors. They're probably nearly running out now, but they go beautifully with this. Um, so I'm just going to set to doodling on here and I can cut two squares out of it so I could do one half differently. Hmm. So I've got all different kind of ideas there to try. I'll carry on and practice a bit more, see which ones I like best and then I will cut this one down, decide which bit, <laughs> which bits I like because I'll probably go to there to there. I'm going to do that off camera and come back and show you how I got on. By that stage this one should be fully dry. Well um, I finished doodling into that and trimmed it off, did the black line around and I will mount it like that. I'll probably initial a corner and and I would just uh, mount it like that. So like I said before you know Rachel makes this look really easy like you just do these watercolour strips and <laughs> doodle into it. <laughs> And uh, somehow mine doesn't look as beautiful as hers does, but I really enjoyed doing it, and um, and I still think it turned out pretty. And I think um, I could definitely send it to someone for my art swap. And um, so I've got that one, that one, and that one all done. Um, 
There's also this one and this one. So we'll cut this into two. <laughs> Still wet there. I've run out of time now. Um, I really can't make this video any longer. What I'm going to do is um, I'll just quickly show you where I'm intending to go with this. Hang on a sec. So this is like the sort of end screenshot of when I did something very similar to this before. So we'll link to this video and in turn this was inspired by watching Gabrielle Anna Cormier. Um, I'll link to I think her I've linked her video in, in the description box to this one. Um, and here's the beautiful flower that uh, oh I called her CC Creations, it's Creation CC. <laughs> That's her beautiful flower. I mean, she made that look really easy. And mine isn't as good as that, but it's still cute, you know. So I will link to this one as well. Uh, but I think for now, I've gone on for long enough. Uh, I still got a few more ideas. Uh, I'll come back. I have a couple more, to, couple more videos to do this week with some more ideas for you. And please, as as I said before, do feel free if you've got any ideas for things people could do for these four-inch little squares of art. Uh, please do share them in the comments or in the Discord. Um, community there's a special little art swap room in there now and um, or in the Artifati Any group on Facebook I'll put my link tree in the description box so you can find your way to all those places um, it's all free to join so you know and it's just lovely really happy and friendly and supportive in there lots of ideas buzzing around all the time whatever time of day or night because we've got people all over the world in there you know it's lovely it's really nice it's kind of what sparked this whole idea in the first place um so i think that's all i've got to say for today one more thing if you go into the if you go into the discord to find swapsters if you want to join in with this art swap and you go into discord go into the art swap room make sure you don't go into the stitchery swap room um so that people know you're looking to swap art, not stitching. If you go into the Facebook group, you just need to post in the group. So make sure you say something like stitch swap or art swap in your post so that people know what they're swapping, because otherwise it could get confusing. So just make sure you do that. Um, any other questions, do shout. If if I'm not about, somebody else will be, somebody will, somebody will help you out. Um, I hope you found that a little bit inspiring. As you can see, you don't need to be a proper artist. You can be someone like me and you can still join in with this. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So don't be intimidated. Jump in and have a go. <laughs> okay, uh, thanks very much for watching today and I'll see you again really soon, tomorrow.